Hello viewer, I'm Dan, and this is another That Cool Story Bro. If there's one thing about me that this channel should make blatantly obvious, it's that I'm opinionated. Now I know I'm not close-minded, and I know how to go with the flow of things, but the point is that I care enough about certain things to make a statement about them. A couple months back I was socializing with some people in my study abroad program, let's call them Douchebag 1 and Douchebag 2, and they both agreed that nothing good had happened in America since the abolition of slavery in 1865. Talking with Douchebag 2 later, he told me how he felt that the corporatocracy in which we live would never change and that America was in its death throes. He also said that if he were ever drafted, he would prefer to join the opposition, no matter who they were, and shoot down American soldiers too, in his words, battle the military industrial complex. Let's handle these insults to my intelligence one by one. First off, America is arguably better off now than it ever has been in the past. Our technological advancements have made us healthier and safer than we ever have been in the past. We all have the same rights, and day by day we're continuing that upward strength. To claim that 1865 was the last time that anything good happened in America is absolutely absurd. In fact, I told him that, and then I brought up examples like the Industrial Revolution in the 1950s. After all, the Industrial Revolution did so much to help the common man earn a living, and it gave him access to wondrous new technologies like the automobile and the radio. In the 1950s, post-World War II, we were the world's only superpower. We had complete domination of the world's markets, and there was a strong sense of peace and national solidarity. Now, Douchebag 1 and 2 counted by saying that the Industrial Revolution created the socioeconomic class struggle, and the 1950s were full of civil strife. While the Industrial Revolution didn't create class struggle but merely expanded it, they're right. The Industrial Revolution created slums. People were damn near worked to death in unhealthy and unsafe working conditions, and women still couldn't vote back then. America in the 1950s was still largely racist and misogynistic, and the fear of communism created an irrational and devastating paranoia. But you know what? Things were still better in those times than in 1865. Look, there's no perfect point in time. There's always good with the bad, but that doesn't mean that bad is all there is. More amazing and wonderful things have happened since 1865 in America than bad things, and why douchebags 1 and 2 can't see that is beyond me. Now let's talk about the other load of stupidity I previously mentioned uttered from the mouth of douchebag 2. To say the world would never change means that he's never taken a history class. Since the first scribblings of recorded history, all humanity has ever done has changed. Empires rise and fall, migrate and settle, make peace and war, invent and destroy, enjoy enlightenment, and suffer dark ages. In fact, we as a species have changed more in the past 100 years than in the past 1,000. Our corporatocracy looks powerful and unmovable, and I hate that. But saying nothing is going to change is just naive and defeatist. Final quote to address. Douchebag 2 said that in the event of being drafted into the military, he would rather pick up a gun for the enemy, no matter who they were and kill American soldiers, then either accept his conscription, or even try to escape the conflict altogether. As a brother of a National Guardsman who served a tour in Afghanistan, that is so unbelievably offensive that it takes literally every ounce of strength in my body for me to not find him right now and stab him in the face. It's shit like that that outlines exactly what douchebags 1 and 2 are. They're cynics. For some reason, it's become popular these days to become some pessimistic moron because people think it's edgy, daring, and intellectual to be dismissive and offensive. Nothing is farther from the truth. Cynics are idiots. Cynicism is for the coward who doesn't want to try to make a difference, so they just complain that they live in a system where they can't make one anyway. That's my next point. Anyone can make a difference. In the words of Irving Goffman, we are all dangerous giants. We all possess the power to change the world around us. We just have to recognize that we're not as helpless as we're meant to feel. Almost all the people in our history books, from Joan of Arc to George Washington to even Adolf Hitler and Joseph Stalin, all those people came from humble beginnings. You don't have to be born with magic powers or something to be able to influence the world. If you really want to, you'll try and you'll do it. And can you believe that when I was proving them wrong about their 1865 claim, they just said, oh, you just love your country. Yeah, is there a problem with that? Is there a problem with loving where I live because I live a happy and healthy life because I received free and qualitative public education and I can do and say as I please without being persecuted by the government? There's nothing wrong at all with loving your country. I also want to clarify again that there's nothing wrong with criticizing your country either. It's because I love my country that I criticize it too. Things that my country have done like the Vietnam War, government-sponsored white supremacy, and the corporatocracy currently in place, those things upset me because they're not what America should be. But the difference between me and cynics is that to me, these things need to be reconciled. So for the love of whatever god you do or don't believe in, don't be an idiot, don't be a cynic, and don't doubt that any one of us, yourself included, can influence the world around us more than we do now. I'm Dan, and what you just watched was That Cool Story Bro.